Hello everybody and welcome back to the table. I'm so excited. This came in just a few minutes ago and it is the Commands and Colors Samurai Battles from GMT Games by Richard Borg. And super excited. Now this might not be too new to you, but this is pretty new to me. And what we'll do is take a look at the components that come in the game and then we'll break the video essentially into two parts. The second part then will be just me talking about said components and story time, all right? So if you just want to see what's in the box, that'll be the first few minutes of the video. And then after that is all bonus extra stuff that you can totally skip if you want. So here we got, it is the exciting medieval Japan battlefield game. 40 battle scenarios. I didn't realize it had 40 scenarios. So this is a lot of gaming. I'm super excited. And I'm looking at the... Napoleon, it's probably about as thick as the Napoleonics, but it is a block game. So if you're unfamiliar with this, it is a block game. This is actually a system that's going back years and years. Started, I think it started with Memoir 44, a World War II game, and then there's like a Battle Cry, there's like the Civil War Battle Cry version, and, and I've seen this licensed out to other things. There's Fantasy version and Ancients and Napoleonics, which is a huge system as well. And now we have Japan. So super excited about that. And uh, I would say it's, I guess you could call it card driven because you use cards to draw and that tells you what units can activate and what you can do and whatnot. And then you got fancy dice that you roll and that will tell you what kind of damage you do. So in theory, the game system is pretty universal. If you understand how to play one, you can play any of them. And then I would say each one has scenario, well, module rules, I, I would call it. So if you do play Napoleonics, that is the basic system as well. But then there's some rules specific to Napoleonics. So let's let's crack it open here. First of all, what, what are we looking for as I try to knife this? I don't think I can read a knife at the same time. Maybe I should have cut this prior to starting to film because I'm trying desperately not to cut the box at all. All right, so we're going to be looking for the rule booklet, a samurai battle scenario booklet, one mounted battlefield game board, four punch board sheets that contain 45 terrain tiles, 30 honor and fortune tokens, 18 victory banners, and then 60 samurai command cards, 40 dragon cards, 12 battle dice, laser printed, hmm, I don't know if the other games they were laser printed, so I'm curious what that looks like. Two unit reference sheets, five block label sheets, 316 blocks. So with two reference sheets, I'm assuming then that means there's uh, like two clans in here. I see there's multiple colors, so I'm sure there's like maybe two main clans and then each clan probably has, I'm guessing, because I haven't opened it yet, right? Um, but they probably have maybe some minor clans that fit within the major ones. I guess we'll find out. Now it does say for 14 years and up. I think that's fair. You could probably go younger. It really just depends on how interested your child is in board gaming and history. I know my son was probably quite capable of playing the game. I think we played Memoir 44 when he was younger, so I think younger kids could probably grasp this pretty well. It just depends on their interest level in the topic. Two players is fair. I don't, unless you have like one of the the major kits that would let you play more, which they did for like Napoleonics. You could play really big battles with folks, uh, and then an hour per battle. Yeah, complexity medium. I, I agree with most of that. I, I would say that you could probably start with some younger kids if you were really interested in that. I already like the artwork. I think this is good. I like on the back at least it looks traditional. This looks kind of modernish, but we'll see. There was some I haven't really investigated much. So there's this there's a story why I haven't investigated this too much, which I will share the story after we take a look at the components. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. It's a block game. I think I mentioned that. I love I like block games. Not a lot of people do, but I really like block games, and I do get a satisfaction of stickering. So that, for me, would be reason enough just to keep buying block games. I think I like, well, I also like clipping the corners on my counters, but anyway, stickering blocks is an, 
is a joy for me. Put on a good movie or something and just stick her away. So there's a lot of blocks as you can see. Usually these bigger ones are probably cavalry type units. This size here is probably mostly your foot infantry. Well, let's see, that could be leaders. Without looking at the stickers, try to figure out, because there's some here. Probably these might be leaders, but there's just, jeez. Oh, there's a lot of different size blocks in here, so we'll have to figure out what goes where. Here's the dice. I'm going to move the main box out of the way for a moment. And let's, we'll bring the camera down. Get a little bit of a zoom in here. These, these dice look nice. I think the last, I don't know for sure. But yeah, I think my Napoleonics, I had to sticker the dice even, which was fine, but I didn't do a good job. Some of them were kind of eh, eh, misaligned. But these laser, in laser printed dice, these are sharp. Samurai. There's some swords. Yeah, wow, these are really, really slick dice. <laughs> I'm just enjoying flipping them, looking at them. This is so much better than anything that I could sticker. All right, so I would say that alone is great. So there you go, you have a ton of blocks. Really, really nice looking dice. Cards, I might have to buy some more card sleeves this weekend. Here's some dragon cards, we'll start there. Ashigaru attack. All right. So try not to cut the cards within. <laughs> Sometimes I try to do these without having an exacto blade. And I've learned better. Just bring a knife. All right. Play alongside your command card. So it looks like possibly without digging too deep here, these are probably because uh, it mentioned something about honor, so you probably get to spend honor points and buy like little extra perk cards because these look like perk cards. These are not your command cards that you get from the other deck. Strike Fear, play before your combat roll. Blue Dragon, play alongside your command card. All enemy units on or next to a train hex with water. That's the target. All right. We won't read all of these, but oh, Turncoat, Desperate Charge. Oh, I like. I like the artwork. It, I'm in my mind. I'm thinking. I mean, this is kind of common. I don't want to call it cartoony, but um, I keep thinking like a lot of times you see Japanese art. I've seen it in this uh, a style that some people have said is like really terrible, but it looks like um, watercolor type of art. Well, I wouldn't say this is the watercolor, but I don't want to call it cartoon either but I kind of like it. It's vibrant. Maybe that's why I like it. I'm a visual person, so the art is very vibrant. All right. Ooh, personal challenges. I haven't seen any duplicates. There, there might be duplicate cards, but it looks like so far... Oh, wait. Okay, there's personal challenge in there. A lot of these do not seem to be duplicated. Which is interesting. So somebody took a lot of time to create a lot of cards for like perks and advantages you can purchase. Awesome. Then here's the command cards. We'll take a look at those. Oh, and I like that kind of stylized watercolor type of look. I think it looks cool. A lot of people, I won't say a lot of people. I think I read like a post from somewhere somebody said they totally hated that look. You know. It's all a matter of opinion. And here we go, order cards. Order one unit left. Uh, there was in the Napoleonics, they had like a, a, a bicorn hat on top. And if you had that, that meant something here. It just looks like a lot of just order cards. I don't see anything special. So I wonder if they replaced kind of that bicorn mechanic where you could do something special with the hat. Like it allowed you to move a leader or something for free. But it looks like maybe with the honor system and then the perks is how you can kind of customize your deck of cards there and do something special. But yeah, this is great. Uh, the artwork is good on these. 
backside is fine. And they're playing card. It's good. Advance right. Two each way. Each order. Each section order one. Yeah. Without playing the game to show you these in action. Uh, again, if you've never seen the game, this pretty much is the heart of the game. If you stripped away all the extra rules, this is pretty much what you need to know. The battle map is split into three sections. You are then, usually the scenario tells you how many cards each person will have to play with. You draw your hand of cards, and then based on what it says here, for example, for each command card you have, including this one, issue an order to one unit with a red symbol on it. Or square symbols or it might say have to definitely have to shuffle these up serpent command and then some are just special events that happen but more commonly what you'll see is one that I'm not drawing as a deep deeper down on the other side of the deck apparently so here's special things okay this is mostly what you will get then it will say something like you know which part of the battlefield because it's divided into a left center right and then it will say you know you can activate one here or two here kind of a deal or you know both and then you have to move your units based on that so that's that's what this primarily this command deck is is telling you which units you can move in each spot all right well plenty of cards and we'll move those off to the side let's take a look here at the rule book not glossy paper but here is very common you got the rule book uh, see the scenario book so rules yeah I think GMT always does really nice rule books they're always well I won't say always but I think just about every single game I've gotten they have color to some degree and I always like that and they're always written nice even though it might be like a more traditional two column layout it's reasonably sized text easy to read here we go nice explanation of units and this is great telling you how many come in a section because a lot of times you'll you'll purchase an army and it will say like how many make up a section that you'll move per hex so four 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 F liters one all right so there's one difference of sizes there's a foot leader and a mounted leader sticker. So that's nice. Explanation of the units. Object of the game. So the rules themselves start on page 11. And you'll see, again, the basics are pretty simple. You set up your game. You play command card. Order the units and leaders. Like you pick who's going to do the action. Then they move, battle, end of turn. Easy. Phase 4 of the battle. Uh, now, usually, let's see here, keeping an eye on, I skipped a page there, phase in a turn. So it started on page 11, here's page 21, and we just got to the end phase. You could probably play the game just like that. So that's about 10 pages worth of rules. Then it gets into honor and fortune. There's your managing and replenishing honor and fortune reserves. Yeah, that's what that dragon deck, I think, is for there. Then your end game. Here's the dragon cards. Here's telling you about the command cards. Battlefield terrain. So really 10 pages of rules and then a couple pages to fill out the honor and fortune section. And I'm just thinking if I compare that back to Napoleonics, it's probably very similar. I know the Napoleonics also included how to uh, manage some cards to form like squares. So this isn't this isn't terrible. I think this is probably fewer rules than Napoleonics. Battlefield terrain, credits, and I feel a few more pages here. Ah, here's what all the cards are. Excellent. And reference sheets on the inside. Again, here's your unit types. Spearmen, samurai bowmen, infantry spearmen, infantry bowmen, Ashigaru, the spearmen there, uh, bowmen, Ooh, arquebusiers. I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly, but your riflemen. Peasants, leaders, and just a few more on this page. More in-depth on them, the reference card. There's probably going to be a separate reference card, too. 
Excellent. So very nice rule book. Then we have a scenario book, over 40 scenarios, and these are typically all historically based. Yeah, as a matter of fact, here we've got, yeah, this, I don't know, I, I didn't look to see if this took place during the Sengoku Jidai period. I'm assuming so. Uh, without, it does say medieval Japanese history, so it's probably a wide range of years that it covers. But if we look to look at some of the, it's dated, so there's, I'd have to read and see. Yeah, I think these are probably, yeah, there's Sekigahara, the Battle of Sekigahara. So these are all historically based battles, it looks like, which is what I love the system for. Even the Napoleonics, right? Everything was uh, a battle that took place. So I would say the Japanese medieval history probably has lots and lots of battles you could write about. So it looks like it starts 1517 AD. Well, okay, I say that, but there is the first one here. It says this is a non-historical. Okay, so there's one non-historical and then everything else is a historical battle. That's awesome. That's good. So 39 historical base battles. And again, I think they do a really good job with the scenario layout. Nice picture of the map, exactly where the units go that you need, how many command cards you get, dragon cards you get, how many honor and fortune points you get uh, based on the samurai army that you have. Now here it just says samurai army blue, red, but if you then go in, yeah, so normally then it will tell you exactly who's playing. Uh, yeah, so they keep it fairly generic as far as like red, blue. That way one side is like maybe the Mori clan or the uh, Nobunaga clan, things like that, Oda clan. Yeah, let's see, these are kind of, there we go. Yeah, each scenario takes up a page. Cool, battle notes, historical background. Nice. Fourth, Kawanakajima. Excellent. Well, we won't read every single one, but just know, 40 total snares. I did not see a separate playbook. I guess this would be the playbook. I, only, I was only thinking that because a lot of times GMT games, they also have, you know, the scenarios, but then like the playbook would also have like an example of play and things like that. But I'm seeing just a rule book, just scenarios. Army Commander, here it is. Well, here's a combat example. So not an, example, an entire example of play, but just as I said, I don't see an example of anything. Well, there it is. Army Commander and Bodyguard Combat Example. So a little bit of a combat example. All right, oh, there we go, Terrain Effects Chart. So these are great, these are on the back of the books, but I'm hoping, hoping there's an actual separate card because this is just paper and I know through use, I'll probably muck it up somehow. I, well, I can just photocopy that, no problem at all. Here's some stickers. Battle Sheet 5. All right. I don't see anything that says extra. My Napoleonics came with some extras, so there's some sheets right there. Ah, here we go. Yep. There we go. Reference cards. So we'll set that aside there for a second. But lots of stickers, yeah, and the stickers are double-sided. Ooh, they look really good though. The artwork on these is fantastic. I've enjoyed the artwork on all the commands and colors I've done. I enjoy the Napoleonics, and these also look really good. A lot of spearmen, bowmen, yeah, mounted, foot leaders. Yeah, I think these look great. Five sticker sheets. And here we go, we got some play aids. So here's the unit reference cards. So we've got two, so you know, usually one for you, one for your opponent. And I would say, uh, again, generically based, so this isn't faction specific. But this gives you an idea what you need. Yeah, when I was, you know, just thinking to the Napoleonics, that, that was nation based so your French had different names and some characteristics compared to like the British and whatnot so this is just a little more generic but you could easily come up with uh, it's really hard to say characteristic national characteristics but there were definitely some clans preferred different tactics and things and that might be reflected in the scenario setup and whatnot this is good I mean punch punch board fortune and honor yeah these are serviceable <laughs> They're fine, but I like it. You got nine flags of each. 
a bunch of samurai tokens and terrain lots and lots of terrain now these look really nice all right well i like the artwork here no little villages with the napoleonics you'd get like some village cards and things like that but yeah this is all forest and mountains excellent and here is the board ah train okay so that back of the i'm definitely going to photocopy then and print off onto my own card stock that train chart and then we have the map we'll see how much of this i can unfold we'll lift the camera up a bit for you but and i love mounted yeah this is pretty good yeah the napoleonics was a good size too i had to clear some space here on my limited gaming table but this works good and then you can punch out a little forest or woods and you can see right here here's the well minus the glare but you can see the lines right there for the your left center right portion of the game board oh i even like just on the edge here probably can't see it very well no move that there got some little samurai artwork yeah all right that's everything that comes in the box so you get your map i like the fact the map was packaged just to help protect the artwork on it a little bit but you've got your map you have three overlays for terrain to modify your scenarios for the maps for this different scenarios you got a token sheet with your honor honor and fortune tracking and then let's see if these are labeled on the back at all oh clan generic here but looks like different clan duplicated yeah but either way probably tokens for different things obviously tokens for different things i just couldn't think immediately what i would use those for by marking victory locations things like that objective hexes you get two reference sheets for the different units involved in the game i would have liked to have seen a separate train chart five sticker sheets with really nice looking unit sticker artwork you got your scenario book 39 historical based scenarios, one non historical training scenario, and a rule book which consists of unit descriptions, the rules of play, which clock in around 13 14 pages, also has a duplicate of the reference cards, and it's got well, back of the scenario book had the train effect card, which probably I would recommend copying that so you can help keep your book in good shape. And then, oh, target type, here's ranged combat charts, which I would probably make a couple copies of this as well. That way each player has a copy. Excellent. Oh, the dice. Yeah, and the dice, amazing. Lovely dice and lots and lots of blocks. And that is what comes in. I probably spoke, oh, don't forget the cards. I probably spoke a little bit more than I had intended to as far as a short unboxing but we'll stop the unboxing there now that you've seen the components from this point on is just telling a little bit about why i'm excited to pick this up so it all started about five well probably closer to six years ago let's see my daughter well let me see my daughter no so this is probably about three years ago four years ago let's say let's say four years ago no i think it was my daughter's first birthday Okay, so about five years ago, let's go with that. Let's say five years ago, we went on a family vacation with some other families. Um, we did that. We've done that for a few times, We've done some cruises and stuff, and it's fun. Everybody comes from different parts of the country, uh, and we get together. And this particular year, we met down here in Tennessee, and we went down to a place called Pigeon Forge area. Um, I think it's got a more different name than that but pigeon forge is what i remember it's a touristy area here in tennessee and what we did because we had three families getting together was we all chipped in and rented a super huge cabin 
and it was great. It had like a downstairs, a main floor, and upstairs. Uh, it was it was nice. I think this part of the country there's a lot of uh, folks with money and they rent their cabins out when they're not being used. So that's what we did. We was we rented one of these really nice cabins, and while we were there we would go into town to do shopping look around because you know it's a tourist place let's go do touristy things well not exactly in pigeon forge but in the area there was another uh town a little bit close close to i forget exactly where it's at but they had a mall so we went to the mall and i think the store was called like sci-fi city and so it was here in tennessee i'm pretty sure like I said, years ago, memory. Anyway, they had a very small war game section. And one of the war games they had was from a company called Zvezda. And they had Samurai Battles. And at the time, I was like, hey, that looks cool. And one of the things with that Zvezda system is they have is called the Art of Tactics. And you use a card, and it has orders that different units can do. And what you do is basically just kind of check off a box and say, well, this unit's going to do this. And with the World War II system, I thought it was pretty cool because if it was an engineer unit, it'd have tasks like, you know, putting in mines or taking mines out, putting obstacles. If they were infantry, you know, you might say I'm loading up onto a truck. Tanks, you know, you can mark down combat. It was, it was kind of cool. I, I liked it. And it was definitely a board game, even though it came with and used Zvezda figures, model kits, it was definitely a board game. Fine. So they had the Samurai Battles, and I thought, that's that's cool. What could possibly go wrong with that? Bought it, and when I got it home, well, I say home, when I got back to the cabin so me and the boys could play, I saw that it also had a Commands and Colors rules variant that used Richard Borg's system of Commands and Colors. And I thought, well, that's, that's even more cool. There's two games in one. And I was going through everything, you know, it was just, it was a really cool, the miniatures were awesome looking, they were fiddly though, I mean, they're, they're, um, small 172nd scale figures, and everything is cast very precise, so they're, you know, you gotta be careful with them, they're not toys, and I was, I was ready to start setting it up and play, and before I got very far, I realized there were no cards. There were no Art of Tactic cards, and there was no Commands and Color cards. So disappointed. I got super stoked and excited to play with my little Samurai miniatures and everything, and I couldn't because there was no cards to play either game system. Everything else was in the box except the cards. It was shrink-wrapped, so I was really bummed. Um, took it back to the store. Nicely, they went ahead and refunded my money, and I, I picked up... Robotech Tactics Miniatures game. <sighs> I would have rather had the Samurai Battles with cards. Now, if I had been at home, I could have just contacted the Zvezda or something like that and said, can you send me cards? And I'm sure they would have sent me replacement cards. However, I was on vacation and I didn't have that kind of time. So if things had been different, I'd probably have the original Samurai Battles as well. So when I heard that Richard Borg was putting this out, I was like, yes, and here it is. So I am very, very happy, and a person might say, but Eddie, it's not the cool miniatures you're talking about. But again, for someone who likes blocks, not even a problem. So that is the unboxing, a little bit of a story behind the game. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have had a chance to play this game yourself. So you can tell me about it. I just haven't seen a whole lot on YouTube about it. Mostly I just see unboxings like what I'm doing. So I'm hoping in the next week I do have my Civil War project going on where I'm just painting up a bunch of, of these infantry trying to get to, ready to play some Civil War miniature gaming. But, in between the painting, because they can be kind of tedious, here's some Union. I mean, somewhat easy. It's blue and, and dark blue, but sometimes you also like to try and paint their belts and things like that. Put a little detail on them. But, so with all that painting, it's nice once in a while just to break out a game like this and play. 
So hopefully I'll get some samurai battles to the table for you. And if people like watching it, then I will probably play a couple, a couple games of it for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.